Hey guys, this is Tapush and this video is all about a brief demonstration of the thesis project I along with my teammates Russell and Drubo did for our undergrad program in Brack University. We have done it under the supervision of assistant professor Dr. Jiauddin. We have also written a conference paper on this project and it has been accepted in an international conference IC4 ME 2018. The paper will hopefully be published in IEEE Explore within 7 to 8 months from now. I'll put a link in the description when it is live. So let's get right into the topic. If you don't know what copy move image forgery is, then a very simple definition would be it is a type of image forgery where a part of the image is copied and pasted within the same image. I think an example will make it more clear, so let's see an example. Like this one. Uh, as you can see in this image, this admission portion is copied from here and pasted here. So it is a good example of copy move image tampering. The detection process for this type of image tampering is based on passive blind approach, which means no prior information of the original image is required for a successful detection. And I don't know if you can notice, but the pasted region here is a bit uh, scaled and also rotated. And I'm going to show you in the later part of the video where I show simulation that even though there are various types of geometrical transformation present in the image. Our model can successfully detect tampering. And now I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of theories so I'm going to run the simulation first and if you're interested in understanding the theory behind it then you can continue from there on. I mean after the simulation. But note that you must know the series of algorithms that has been applied to understand the overall working procedure of the model. So let's see the simulation first. I'm running the course now and you're gonna see the output. Uh, okay, at first I wanna mention that the execution time would have taken a lot less if the recorder wasn't on. So at first the image is converted into grayscale and then not this one and then two level SWT is applied to decompose the image. Then the approximate image, that is this portion, is used as input parameter for SIFT algorithm. SIFT then accurately detects the key points. Here the image on the left shows initially detected key points and the image on the right shows accurately detected key points. And afterwards G2NN algorithm is run to find the matching pairs. Then the matching pairs are clustered using agglomerative hierarchical clustering to decide whether the image is tampered or not. And if it is tampered, then false positive removal is done. That is some of the match pairs are discarded and the final match pairs of the key points are shown in the output image by drawing a line between them. Like this one. And I also want to mention that the different colors indicate that the key points belong to different clusters. So the simulation part of the video ends here and for the remaining portion of the video I'm going to go in depth on the algorithms and most importantly why they were used. So first comes the pre-processing part where the input image is converted to grayscale. It is very common in image processing to convert an image into grayscale and there are many valid reasons for doing so. For instance, color image doesn't help in identifying the important features of the image. And also computational time of the algorithms reduced substantially when the input image is converted to grayscale. And also there are many other justifications for this but to keep this video short I'm not going to go in depth on this. And you don't have to know the fractional values that, uh, that are multiplied with the RGB components. MATLAB has built in function that converts RGB image to grayscale image. So after the conversion, the grayscale image is decomposed using SWT, that is stationary wavelet transform. SWT has advantage over other decomposition or compression techniques. For instance, it is shift invariant unlike DCT. It is also translation invariant, blur invariant, noise invariant unlike DWT and DCT. But the primary reason for applying SWT in our model is because it helps SIFT algorithm to extract substantially more dominant key points which helps in increasing accuracy of our detection. Here let's see the figure. Um, 
here you can see that uh, the image is decomposed into four components this this is the approximate component this is the vertical uh, actually horizontal component this is the vertical and this is the diagonal actually what we have done is we have uh, taken the first level um, approximate image and then we have applied SWT again so that is why it is called two level SWT so after SWT comes the role of shift algorithm which is the heart of our model this algorithm is developed by David Lowy, a very prominent figure in the field of computer signal and vision. And it will be nearly impossible to talk about this algorithm in details over a single video, especially because it is to a great extent complicated. So I'll give a brief overview. But if you want more details on it, then the best option would be to go through his paper on SIFT. Now before I go into the details on SIFT, you have to know why we use SIFT in our model in the first place. So SIFT is a feature extraction algorithm. Its full form is scale invariant feature transform. And what sets SIFT apart from other algorithms like SURF is that it is uh, not only a detector but also a descriptor. And remember I mentioned earlier that our model can detect tampering even if there is presence of geometrical transformation. It is entirely because of SIFT. The whole algorithm is divided into four main steps. The first step is scale space extrema. The purpose of this step is to locate potential key points. And in order to do that, we take different smoothing versions of the image by convolving the image with Gaussian function. I know a bunch of talkings will make it seem more complicated than it actually is. So let's see some figures to visualize it. So this is the scale space and in order to make the detection of key points more reliable and efficient difference of Gaussian function is used. That is a dog pyramid is formed by computing difference between two adjacent scales. As you can see in the figure the difference of the scale space forms the dog pyramid and I have also shown the scale space in the output of the program. Uh, here it is. In this figure the number of rows denotes the number of levels and the number of columns denotes the number of octaves. So after the formation of dog pyramid, the extrema and minima are identified from the dog pyramid by comparing each pixel with 26 of its neighboring pixels. Like shown in this figure. As you can see here, this pixel has 26 neighboring pixels. 9 in this scale, 9 in the scale below it and uh, 8 in its own scale, so 9 plus 9, 18 plus 8, 26. I have also shown this in one of the figures in the output of the program. Like in this figure, the image on the left, these green points you see, these are the initially selected key points. So after locating the potential key points, the next step is to accurately detect the most dominant key points, which will potentially be invariant to all kinds of geometrical and affine transformation. And for achieving this purpose, David Lowy applied Tyler series expansion on the scale space like the one I have shown in the figure. And those extrema, that is the key points having intensity value less than a predefined threshold value are rejected. So after discarding some of the initially selected key points, what remains is the most dominant key points. You can see the figure on the right, the blue points. These are accurately detected key points. And if you compare it with the image on the left, then it is clearly evident that the key points initially detected are more in number than the one on the right image. So after accurate detection of key points, the algorithm goes to the third phase, that is assigning an orientation to each key points. Keep in mind that it is the orientation assignment that makes the key points invariant to rotation. Unfortunately, there is no visual figure to show how it is done. I would suggest you to read David Lewis' paper, especially the orientation assignment and descriptor generation part thoroughly because there is no easy way to explain it since it is all mathematical formula and equations. For instance, calculating the gradient magnitude using coordinate of the key points or degree of orientation from the histogram of the local gradient. You see, the more I talk about it, the more confusing it will sound. Just read Devil Lewis paper for the third and the fourth steps. But here's what I can do for you. I can show you what the descriptor vector generated in the fourth and final step of the algorithm would look like. While generating the descriptor vector in the program, I have saved it by creating a shift file. Let's see it.
So each descriptor contains a 4 by 4 matrix of 16 histograms around the key points. So every shift feature vector has 128 elements. 4 into 4 equals 16 into 8 equals 128 elements. Just remember that it is the description of the key points that makes shift different from other feature extraction algorithms. It is also due to description of the key points that this implemented model is robust and in some cases invariant to illumination. So that's the end of the shift algorithm. After feature extraction, we find matching pairs of key points and for this we use G2NN that is generalized to nearest neighbor algorithm which acts as a filter to find out the most important key points. And by most important key points, I mean matched pairs of key points of the copied and forced region in the input image. Those key points that fail to meet the condition of the algorithm are discarded. The whole algorithm runs iteratively to find out the matched pairs of key points. It will be more clear when I explain the steps. In the first step, we take a key point as a reference key point from the set of key points extracted by the shift algorithm. Then, the distance from the reference key point to the rest of the key points are calculated and stored in a vector. The size of the vector is equal to the number of key points extracted, minus 1. That is, if there is n number of key points extracted, then the size of the vector is n minus 1. And in the third step, the vector is sorted using one of the sorting algorithms. After sorting is done, ratio of the distance of two adjacent cells of the vector is calculated and checked whether the ratio is within the predefined threshold value. If it is, then the ratio of the next two adjacent cell is computed and checked. At some point as the loop progresses, the ratio will exceed the threshold value and when it does, the ratio's denominator is set as matched point with the reference key point. And that's how the matching pairs are computed. The threshold value we considered in our code is 0.6. So after finding the matched pairs of key points, the next task is to determine whether any kind of forgery has occurred or not in the input image. And for that purpose, we apply agglomerative hierarchical clustering. Several linkage techniques can be used to implement it. For the sake of understanding the clustering process, we use a dendrogram, which is more like a tree structure. Well, as you can see in this figure. Consider the leave nodes as key points. The value of the nodes are not actual values of key points. This is just a random figure of dendrogram that I found in the internet. So in the figure as you can see 9 and 23 are joined to form a subcluster. A subcluster can be formed between two key points or two subclusters or between a key point and a subcluster. Finally, a large cluster having all subclusters of key points will be formed. At the end of the clustering process, those subclusters that do not have at least three matched key points are discarded. Our model considers the input image as tampered if there are two or more clusters having at least three matching key points. Only when any kind of forgery is detected, the model proceeds to the next step that is removal of false positive matches and for this purpose ransack that is random sample consensus algorithm is used. MATLAB has built in library function for this algorithm. In short what it does is it determines the inliers and outliers from the matched points we got from G2NN. Inliers are the correctly matched pairs of key points while outliers are considered as mismatched key points. Firstly the algorithm randomly selects a few pairs of key points. Then other pairs of key points are compared with them. The pairs of key points that have values under a certain threshold values are considered as inliers and the pairs that have values above the threshold values are considered as outliers. This whole process runs in a loop having a certain number of iterations and highest number of inliers are taken so that no valid matched pairs of key points are left out. The remaining points are considered as outliers. The code runs for 1000 iterations and the threshold value is set for 0.05. So after false positive removal, the matched pairs of key points are marked in the output image with different colors according to the subcluster they belong to. You can also see a figure to be more clear. Let me see. Like, where is it? Where is it? No. I can't. Oh uh, yeah, 
So as you can see in this figure, each subclusters are given a specific color. So finally, after marking the matched pairs of key points, a line between them is drawn to show which points are copied to which region of the image. I've also shown the output in the program. Yeah, so this is the final output of the program. Okay guys, this is the end of the video. If you have liked it, then please leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends who are working on image forensic. And also let me know through the comments if this video was helpful. And once again, this is Tapur signing off. Peace.